This video will be about binomial probability distributions. I'm going to show an example by using the table, the formula, and with StatCrunch, and then we'll go into more um, more difficult problems where StatCrunch becomes just the easier option. Assume that the procedure yields a binomial distribution with n is three trials, and the probability of success is 0 0.60. Use the binomial probability table to find this. Okay, let's do it. Click the information here. It's usually in the back of the book as a table and it only gives you so much information. Actually this only goes up to n and then this is the probability across the top. We have 0.6 as the probability so that means here we're in this column and then we use a binomial uh, of x equals exactly 2. So this shows exactly 2 with n being 3, 3 trials. So here's my n, here's exactly 2. So if you wanted to find exactly 2, you go to 2 and go over to 0.6, and I have 0.432. The probability of exactly 2 is 0.432. If we wanted to find, say, um, less than 2, less than or equal to 2, then we'd have to do the 0.432 plus exactly equal to 1 plus 0. You can sum them up then, right? Because this would be less than 2 would be, less than or equal to 2 would be 2, 1, and 0. Strictly greater than 2 would be 3, right? Or greater than or equal to 3 would be 2 and 3. So you'd sum those up. So that's how you use the table. Not the most friendly thing in the world. This is very limited, okay? The formula can be used in Excel um, to create, you know, your whole table, and basically the whole chart for whatever you want and calculate automatically. The C is a combination. So here's the formula for the co combinatorics, combination. And then this is the whole probability model here, where n is the number of items, x is your um, number, x is your number of successes, p is your probability, and one minus p is sometimes written as q, right? One minus p is q. Okay, so let's write these out here. I have it kind of set up here, but let's get our n. Our n in our case is 3. Our x is 2. Our probability is 0.6. That means 1 minus p, or q, is 0.4. All right, and I already have the 2 in there. Kind of the probability of exactly 2, right, would be 3 choose 2, I already put the 2's in there, probability of 0.6 to the second power, 1 minus 0.6, or just Q, I could have put 0.4 in there, and then N was 3 minus 2. Okay, let's uh, maybe just make it a little easier for the calculator. 3 choose 2, 0.6 squared, and then 1 minus 0.6 is 0 0.4 to the first power. So that will be the probability of exactly 2. You can see how you can put this formula into Excel by letting cells equal n, x, and p. Okay, 3 choose 2. In the calculator, uh, the TIA, you have a math button. So you put the number you want first of n math over to probability, down to the combinatorics number three. Three choose two. I'm gonna hit enter because I just don't want to mess up this. So that's that's that value, three. Then I will multiply times 0.6 squared. Then I will multiply by 0.4. 0.432. So that prob this um, formula by distribution formula gives you the same exact answer as the table. Now finally StatCrunch, and it's pretty quick in StatCrunch to do this. I'm going to open StatCrunch here, down here. I might open it um, on the main window, but StatCrunch has a calculator for the binomial. And I got to increase my window stat calculator binomial and we put in our number n 3 our probability 
0.6, and then we choose that we want equal to. Look, at they have different options here, which makes it nicer. And we want it equal to two, compute 0.432. Obviously, this calculator is a lot quicker. It's, it's programmed like you could program the formula for Excel, and you could maybe even find less than or equal to two. So that less than or equal to two would be zero, one, and two. Equal to two is just two. See how it changes? Greater than or equal to two, two and three. So this allows you to find a lot more than just, or a lot more quicker, right? Okay, here's a new problem. A binomial probability experiment is conducted given the parameters. Compute the probability of X successes in the N dependent trials of the experiment. So N number, P probability, number of successes. So we want X is less than or equal to three. This is super easy in StatCrunch. Calculator, a binomial. It's a binomial probability model. Nine for N, probability 0.5, less than or equal to three, whoops, three, 0 0.25390625. And that's it. And it's showing that less than or equal to three would be these discrete values, right? None, one, two, three, and sum them up. Okay, I wanted to do a different problem here where we looked at the mean and standard standard uh, deviation of a binomial distribution. This doesn't really use StatCrunch, but it kind of shows um, the other part of binomial distributions. So in this example, over here we have the mean, the variance, and standard deviation. So here would be the mean, and here would be the standard deviation. So assume the hybridization experiments are conducted with P's having the property that for offspring there's a 0.75 probability that P has green pods. Assume that the offspring P's are randomly selected in groups of 18. Complete these things below. The value, find the mean and the standard deviation for the numbers of P's and green pods of groups of 18. N is 18. The mean is pretty easy. Mu is equal to 18 times the probability, 0 0.75. 0 0.75 times 18 is equal to 13.5. So that's the mean. Now the standard deviation, so it's a little trickier. It's just the square root of 18 times p, 0 0.75, times q, remember q is just 1 minus p, so 0 0.25, they add up to 1, then take the square root of that. So I'll put it in here as second square root We'll do it all together, 18 times 0.75 times 0.25, pretty easy, 1.837, 1.8 to one decimal place, okay? So finding the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution is pretty quick. Now let's answer this question. Use the range rule. Well, what's the range rule? Here's the range rule. Significantly low values are two standard deviations below the mean, and that's going to be significantly low. Significantly high are two standard deviations above the mean. That's a plus. Two standard deviations above the mean. Okay, so let's go here and look at this one. The range rule to find if they're significantly high or low. So the values of blank P's are significantly low. How do I know it's 9.8? Well, we know what the mean is, 13.5. We know what the standard deviation is, 1.8. So I take my calculator, and I'm going to go 13.5, and I'm going to go minus two standard deviations below the mean, times 1.8. Nine point eight. Well, I guess I need to not round. They're rounding to their one point eight. Let's try it again. Thirteen point five minus two times one point eight three seven. Nine point eight. So 
interesting that they you know round off but you're not supposed to use this standard deviation when you're making your calculations they might have an error tolerance there yep 9.8 and 9.9 .9. so either value is correct so you could have round off we could have used 9.9 .9. okay the next one says values of greater than or significantly high what's the significantly high well we'll do it again with this one so 13 13.5 plus 2 times 1.837 17.17 17 17.2 round up okay is the result of six peas with green pods a result that is significantly low? So if you had six peas with green pods of all of the um, 18, is that significantly low? Yes, because it's lower than the 9.8. These are the values that are significantly low, and lower than that would be significantly low. Higher than that would be significantly high.